Hi, I'm Henda with Cost Gear, and today we're making 17 different gems using four main techniques. Hot glue, plastic shapes, sculpting, and resin casting. In addition to that, we're going to use different materials to color, set, and back our gems. All techniques and materials will be timestamped below, and I'm going to use the Cost Gear app planner to make it easy to follow along. So let's get started. Let's make some gems with hot glue. And you'll want to be sure you have crystal clear hot glue sticks. Hot glue is the main ingredient for these gems, but I also have lots of materials for different colors, settings, and backings, including foil, foil paper, markers, nail polish, soda cans, super glue, wire, and some metal rings. I also have some silicone molds that I'm going to use that I didn't put in the shop for some reason. First, we're going to use the soda can. Soda cans are a cheap, easy, sturdy method for backing gems. Most are plain silver on the inside, so all you have to do is cut it out and flatten it. And I was afraid that the edges of this were going to be sharp, but I think it's actually only sharp where it's thicker on the top and bottom. This part I couldn't really hurt myself on. But I cut out a piece of the aluminum and tape it to whatever surface you're working on. Pick a marker to color your base. The easiest shape to do with hot glue is circles. Uh, you can freehand them, but I'm using a stencil. Now fill your shape with a somewhat shallow layer of hot glue. I usually like to work towards the center and then push it out towards the edges. It'll generally self-level on its own, but if it has cooled with some lumps in it, you can actually use a heat gun to smooth that out. Don't do this too long because the heat will cause the hot glue to spread even more, so try and point the heat gun like directly above so that you don't really heat up the sides and the hot glue can't go too far. And you can see this looks pretty good. All I have to do is cut it out once it's cooled down. Except that I threw it away on accident, so here's that process one more time, and then I'm cutting that one out, and it looks nice. You can also use basically the same method with aluminum foil. I think the effect looks best if you crinkle the foil and then smooth it and then color it. It is a flimsy material, so you might want to seal the back with a bit of tape or clear nail polish. And here's how the hot glue and foil method worked out and compared to the soda can. In both of these, you can see the marker stroke, so you might either want to use a pretty runny marker or just keep it to smaller gems. One excellent way to combat this is with colored foil paper. This is often sold in cheap packs for origami, and you can also use like fancy scrapbook paper. You can also like print a design on actual paper, but I didn't do that because my printer is out of ink. You can leave the paper smooth or crinkle it up and flatten it out, which is gonna be my personal favorite. I think it adds just the right amount of dimension. And tape that down to your surface so it doesn't scoot around. So it's the same process again, but this time I'm actually gonna add these metal rings to use as a gem setting. I'm just setting them on the paper and then filling them up with hot glue. It can be a little tricky to get the hot glue all the way to the edges without spilling over, but I just sort of wiggle around the outside until it touches somewhere, and then use a toothpick to get the hot glue where I want it to be, then use the heat gun to smooth the whole thing out. I'm cutting out the gem as close to the ring as possible. And this method is just super clean, I love the result. To avoid the paper peeling off, you can also add clear nail polish to the back sides. And of course, don't feel limited. You can do these with or without these metal rings. You can try different shapes. Go crazy. Crafting crazy. You can also make some really clean, quick hot glue gems by using a silicone mold. And don't forget there are other types of glue sticks, like some that are glow in the dark or have glitter, and you can just shoot those right into the mold too. I'm filling this one with normal clear hot glue just because I'm kind of curious what that looks like. And here's what that basic hot glue gem looks like. You can see it's not as clear as when we do a more shallow layer, but you can play around with that by adding some glitter to the mold or a little bit of powder pigment. And here's the glitter one. You can actually also coat these in a clear nail polish to up the shine a little bit. If you want to get really fancy, you can also make your own custom wire setting. I'm using aluminum wire because it's really easy to shape and I have that in both like I think like a 12 gauge and 20 gauge wire? Hard to tell. But I'm gonna use a silicone mat so that I can actually peel the gem off and it'll stay a little bit translucent. But you can also pair this with any of our previous methods. This is kind of neat because this is much harder to do with resin since the resin would sort of leak out from under the wire. But since hot glue dries way faster, I have a lot more freedom. Though I am using toothpicks to hold the frame as flat as possible to the surface. I think it's a neat result and a good option for quick jewelry especially. I'm coloring the back with a marker, but that wasn't quite as much color as I wanted. So I'm also adding this dimensional bluish purpley nail polish on top of that. Love the results. So that wraps up our hot glue gems. Here are some of my favorite little babies. Overall, I recommend the hot glue method for small gems and also gems that go in jewelry. A great way to make larger, more bulbous gems is to use plastic shapes like bottles, ornaments, and toys. That'll be the base of our gems, but we also need some variety for some color and backing options. So here's foil, nail polish, glue, glitter, and foil paper. 
I've cut out the bottom of a smart water bottle for this cool dimensional vibe thing. Uh, I'm also trash at eyeballing circles, so I will again be using a stencil to cut out a proper circle shape. To color it, I'm gonna use this bluish purple color shift nail polish, which you're gonna wanna add to like the underside of the dome and not on top. Brush on the first layer and try not to be too discouraged about the pretty light pathetic color. For the second layer, I actually pour out more nail polish, swirl it around, and then brush it out. That's already a lot better, but a lot of light is still getting through since the nail polish is translucent. So what we need is a backing and you can just cut something out or use foil paper like this gem. Uh, but for the nail polish, actually something that'll work really well is just black nail polish. One layer worked for me and that's already so much better. I'm also doing the same thing with this little dome shape toy and this plastic ornament just so you can see what the nail polish effect looks like on a smooth surface. You can check out other plastic bottle shapes too. This one has five little teardrop shapes on the bottom. And this in particular was much harder to cut out than I expected, but I did manage it. For this one, we're gonna shape foil paper to the surface. I'm using red foil paper, but you can obviously use the aluminum foil and marker method if you want to. Once I have the shape I'm going for, I'm gonna take off the plastic and carefully add a little rim of glue to the bottom perimeter and then put the plastic back on. It will dry clear. Side note, I also did try and use super glue, but that notoriously like chemically reacts with the plastic and creates this frosty effect that I don't want. So once the glue is dry, I can cut out my gem and I think the result is very tidy. Now let's do some stuff with these trusty plastic ornaments. And they come in a variety of sizes. You can even get shapes that aren't circles, but I only have circles, so we're doing circles. I'm shaping regular aluminum foil to the surface of this one and then removing the plastic once I have the shape. You can color the foil beforehand, but it's more likely to smear and you're more likely to use more ink than you really needed to. Uh, also, don't color the foil shape, obviously. My brain didn't work. Color the ornament instead, that's much easier. And I have a little bit of craft glue on my finger to add to the bottom rim and then put the foil back in there and let it dry. Then cut it out. And here's that same process, but with colored foil paper. You can also just paint the inside of the ornament. This also gives very clean results. I like to mix silver with a slightly translucent shade of color, and I just mix that right in the ornament itself. You may want to be a little bit mindful of smoothing out any brush strokes, but honestly, it's not usually super noticeable except very up close. You can use a low heat gun setting to help the layers of acrylic paint dry a bit faster. You can see it's pretty solid and opaque, but there's still a little bit more showing than I wanted, so I'm adding one more layer of silver paint. And that already looks a lot better to me. There's lots of room for LED lights if I wanted to add those too. Finally, I have this little plastic toy casing, which I'm gonna cover in craft glue, then sprinkle in some glitter and push that into the glue. It's cloudy for now, but the craft glue will dry completely clear like this. And you can add a backing to make it pop even more. Overall, plastic shapes are great for larger gems, but you are a little bit limited to the plastic shapes that you can find. Another way to make gems is to sculpt or carve them. You can, of course, use air dry clay or craft foam, but I'm gonna focus on thermoplastic beads, foam clay, and insulation foam. We're also gonna make a super quick custom mold. So first things first, let's say you have this dope gem, but you need more than one of them, or you want it in a different color. I've used this two-part putty mold, and it's so easy to use. Once you combine the two parts, you can just shape it around your gem and then go ahead and let that dry. It does that surprisingly fast. I wanna say in like less than a couple hours, but it's gonna depend on your kit. Then take out your original gem and you can make as many as you please. First, I'm gonna use thermoplastic beads. Uh, although these become clear when I heat them, they're not gonna stay clear and I would definitely recommend using a clear material if you can. I think Warbler sells like crystal art, which is pretty clear, and you can also use clear Warbler if you want to. But I have these very old Instamorph beads, so that's what we're working with. I like to heat the beads in a lid so that they can't fly away, and then do a little bit at a time. I'm picking this up with my bare hands because I have cosplay hands, but do be careful, it is going to be hot. And I'm just shaping this to the surface of the mold. And I know the thermoplastic beads are pretty strong once it dries, so I don't really have to make a solid shape. Make sure that you press it in really well so it really fills up the entire shape of the mold and you get nice, clean, smooth surfaces. Once it's cool, you can go ahead and demold it. I'll be honest, I did not do the cleanest job with this one because I knew it wasn't gonna work super well anyway, but the process is still the same and it'll look great with a clear material. Or you could just paint this, but I'm abandoning this one. This little triangle on the other hand did not give me nearly as much trouble. Now I'm gonna use foam clay. This stuff works similar to air dry clay, but is a bit more lightweight and like a little bit more forgiving since you can sand it. Press it into the mold, making sure that you cover all sides and surfaces. It doesn't really need to be truly solid. That's 
actually just gonna slow down the dry time, but I do wanna make sure it's really pressed into all of the surfaces. Another thing I'm gonna do to help the dry time is poke little air holes in it, which you can do with any long, thin, pointy metal thing. Once it's dry, which usually takes like at least a day, uh, you can go ahead and demold it. You can see here that some of my little poked holes did make it all the way to the surface, but I'm not too worried about that since I knew that I was gonna paint it in acrylic anyway, which is very likely to fill in these tiny little holes. Speaking of, it's time to paint. I've added a blue layer already right onto the foam. No need to seal. For this gem, I'm gonna go with a sort of cartoony, vibrant style like in World of Warcraft. Uh, I lost a chunk of footage here, sorry about that, but I'm working with silver, blue, and white colors. Make every face of the gem a slightly different shade of blue. This will give it a really good dimensional effect no matter which way you look at it. Then add some shine spots and a little bit of a highlighted edge. You can also add a layer of clear nail polish or any clear spray paint to give it a little bit of shine. You can of course also just use regular modeling clay and either shape it by hand or use a mold. If you are gonna use clay, I do recommend some sort of modeling clay or something that won't shatter if you drop it or just be less clumsy than I am. Clay will usually hold its shape okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out so that I can make more and more gems if I need to while those dry. I don't have a lot to say about the clay method. Good, good method if you're good at sculpting. The last sculpting method I'm gonna do is to carve insulation foam. Styrofoam or floral foam will also work well, it's just not quite as dense and sturdy, so I'm sticking with insulation foam. Plus that's what I have. It's gonna help a lot to look at a reference of cut gems, and I would start with a simple shape first. Cut down the insulation foam to the general shape that you want your gem to be. Then use a marker to trace out where each edge is gonna be. And I'm using a box cutter to just slice those angled edges. No worries if it's not the cleanest, you'll get a little better at it as you go, and I'm actually gonna wrap this whole thing in warbla anyway. You can also use craft foam or aluminum foil to cover your gem, uh, or just use craft glue, but I always save these warbla scraps and never use them, so I'm gonna use them now. Also, don't use a Hika near insulation foam. I did not notice, but I absolutely belted one of the sides of my gem. But anyway, I've sandwiched the foam in warbla and I'm going ahead and smoothing that down to sharpen the edges and the surface. A ruler can help with this too. And now I can go ahead and paint my gem. I'm doing acrylic paint right on the warbla because I do not really feel like sanding or smoothing it right now. First, it's a base of color. And again, I'm gonna make each surface a slightly different shade of that color just to make it look like it has dimension no matter which way you're looking at it. High contrast is key to making the gem look authentic. I'm also painting the sides with these kind of abstract shiny shapes uh, just to mimic the Steven Universe art style. Plus I've made like a zillion gems at this point, I just wanted to go ham on the painting. And of course adding a little white highlight to the edges and some clear nail polish for a nice shine. Sculpting and carving is a great way to make large lightweight gems, especially if they don't need to be translucent or clear. Finally, you can of course cast gems in resin or a similar material. This probably gives the cleanest results, but it does also tend to be a bit heavier. I have a silicone mold, two part clear resin, resin dyes, and some powder pigments. First, I'm mixing equal amounts of the two parts of this resin kit. This kit has a one-to-one -one ratio for both of the parts, but some kits have other ratios, so just double check your box. I also recommend maybe not mixing the two parts in a colored cup because now I'm gonna add a couple drops of dye. A few is all you need, but it's a little hard to see because the cup is a color. That was like a clover green and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to make it exactly the shade I would like. Now I'm pouring the resin into the silicone mold really slowly to avoid as many air bubbles early on as possible. But we are gonna be able to heat gun some of those air bubbles out later. Right next to this gem, I'm gonna pour one that uses pigment powder instead of the dye. So again, mixing equal parts A and B and then add some of this shimmering blue pigment powder. You can also mix them together for whatever colors you'd like. And again, pouring it in super slowly to prevent as many air bubbles as possible. And since I have a bit of resin left over, I'm also gonna add a little bit of glitter to this one and pour it on top, just to see how it goes. Okay, now I'm using a heat gun on a low setting to warm up the resin and get those air bubbles to rise to the top out of the gym. Some of the air bubbles are still gonna float up even after you've turned the heat gun off. Just keep repeating the process until you have something pretty clear. So here's a gem with just the resin dye. You can see it's really clean and clear. And this one with just the pigment powder has a lot of dimension and sparkle to it. And here they are next to each other. Oh, and that glitter one, which, eh. The results are better if you just use dye or leave it completely clear like this. Oh, and I poured one more that was a mix of both the dye and the pigment. This mixture was a little bit heavy on the pigment, so it's not quite as see-through, but if you just use as little powder as possible, it'll be more and more clear. 
Another great upside of resin is that it's really easy to add sturdy fasteners. In this mold, I'm adding some open eye head pins that have been cut down. Then pouring some of my dye and pigment powder mixture right on top. And here's the demold. You can see the gold pin through this gem since I use like a combination of the powder and dye. If I used just powder, you probably wouldn't be able to see the pin. I also did this more shallow pigment just to see how it looks. You can see the pin on one side, but I'm not too annoyed about it. And again, if I just added more powder pigment, then it'd be really opaque and you wouldn't be able to see the pin at all. And I added some cute little earring fasteners because these are gonna be dangly and awesome. I also wanted to mention some silicone molds aren't the smoothest. Like this mold has a bit of like a frosty dirtiness to it that I can't really get off. And for that reason, the gem is gonna have a bit of a cloudier surface, but I can get rid of this by either polishing the resin or just adding clear nail polish. Another thing you can do is just cast a ton of crystal clear resin gems and then add different backings. You can use any of the methods we've used before, but uh, in this case I had some, but in this case I had some scraps of vinyl Cricut paper, so I just added that to the back of these gems. And I did that with super glue because super glue does not frost resin. Resin casting is probably the most realistic and professional way to make a gem for cosplay. It's a lot easier than it looks, and you'll also get better as you experiment with it. And that's it. Now you know more than 17 ways to create a cosplay gem. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I didn't do even every combination that I mathematically could have tried, but if you have a combo that really works for you, let us know down below so others can try it too. You can also join Coscare's Discord to talk craft with other cosplayers. And of course, check out the Coscare app planner if you're looking for a great way to keep all of your projects organized. I think this one would have been a mess without it. And yeah, until next time, I'm Hento with Coscare, and we can't wait to see what you bring to life.